G'day ladies and gentlemen, do you love night sky photography just as much as I do? Well, if you do, I think this little filter is going to help you out and give you that extra little 10% in your night sky photography images that you need. How? Let's find out. G'day ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me once again for this beautiful darkness of night sky vlogtography, where we're talking all about light pollution filters. I don't live in the greatest country right now for night sky photography in Slovenia, but this light pollution filter does help me out. I've had plenty of people contact me over the past couple of weeks asking, can they photograph the night sky in their area? Damn and unlucky, no. They are places like London or today, Buenos Aires, where it's very heavily populated. So that means a lot of light pollution. Save your pennies, go for a trip, book a workshop or tour, and photograph those night skies. But this is going to help you out in those green and yellow areas. I'm going to leave a link in the description about those yellow and green areas for an app or on your desktop called Light Pollution Map. This is going to help you out in your area about how much light pollution is in that area. On the first vlog, or this vlog just here, I talked all about how to pre-plan, but this light pollution filter is going to help you out e bloody immensely. We're gonna find out exactly how in this vlog. Let's go. Rightio, so we're out in the field talking all about light pollution filters, and I wanna show you today how light pollution filters can give you that extra 10% for your night photography images, which is what we are after, of course. Composition right in front of me, I've got this old wooden hut up on Pokluka, a plateau here. I've drove past this five, 10 times and always wanted to photograph it, but I never thought I'd be photographing it at night with the Milky Way above it, but pretty bloody cool. I wouldn't normally photograph it this way during the day especially, but because the Milky Way is running this way, I'm actually behind the heart photographing. Hey, I've come out all this time, it's about two in the morning, I'm photographing the bloody Milky Way and teaching you guys how to use a pollution filter. Right, I've got this Freewell magnetic filter system. I use this for all my filters. A great system, especially when we come out at night to night. It's just magnetic, it comes on and off. And like I said, at pitch black, it's so easy. You don't have to worry about screwing filters on. Very, very easy. Now, base settings, like we spoke about on previous lessons, I'm shooting at 25 seconds shutter speed, so I'm increasing by five seconds. 6,400 ISO. Done a little cheeky business tonight, going up to the aperture 2.8. That's because I was photographing one week ago when there was no moon, 4% moon. Now I am five days later on Friday night. It is 40% moon, I believe, top of my head right now. Yes, it's set, the moon has set. I'm closer to Bled, where I live, and it's giving me light pollution. So I've got more light around me. So Therefore, I can bump up my aperture, get rid of those negative factors, common all that sort of stuff, which we're going to touch on later inside of this course on this channel, so please make sure to subscribe. But one thing I want to talk about heavily is I've locked down my white balance to 4,300, because when I'm gonna show you these images, you're gonna say, Matt, you've dodged this up, this is not correct, this is not what it does. I'm guaranteed telling you I'm not changing anything. I'm gonna take an image, take the filter off, take another image, and they're gonna be exactly the same settings. Same focusing point, everything exactly the same. And here, side by side, is the direct images. You can see the advantage of a light pollution filter. It is going to get rid of that horrible, horrible color from the cities, that orange color from the city lights, and it's going to add a more natural blue into it. It's based on reducing color cast if you ever do long exposure photography. The best way I can describe this is because most people that do night photography also do sort of nature and landscape photography. This is very similar to using a polarizer filter. So pollution filter at night, polarizer during the middle of the day. This can only be achieved in camera. I can't take that image at 4,300 ISO with no light pollution filter and take it back into post-production and get the same results. Yes, I can get close, but I cannot get the same results. And then when I push the image all the way to try and get those results with a light pollution filter, I still can't edit anymore. With a light pollution filter, I've got those results in camera and therefore I can still go ahead and edit that image, which is most bloody important. 
But for me, the biggest takeaway from this is when you photograph the Milky Way, the Milky Way core is sort of that red, that deep maroon color. This gives it its color back, which is what we're bloody out here for. We wanna catch absolutely spitting banging images of the Milky Way. This is allowing us to do that. So if you need to upgrade something in your night photography gear, if you've got a good lens, if you've got a good camera, get a bloody filter. The free magnetic filter, I can't, you know, talk high enough about it. It's magnetic. It allows you to put ND fills on the front, whatever you want to do. This is not a paid sponsorship. This is just a bloody good filter. And guys, you can see the result it is creating. Then we can go through with our head torch, add a little bit of artificial light, blend that in. And here is the resulting image from a pollution filter that you cannot achieve in post-production. Guys, there you have it. Let me know in the comments below if you use a pollution filter for your night sky photography. And if you don't, will you be purchasing one? Because it is crazy, absolutely bloody crazy what it can do. I would not capture these images where I am located to in Slovenia and pretty much all the images I'm about to capture through this entire course over the next three or four months without this filter. Because I live in Slovenia that is polluted by cities, by small towns everywhere, so I can't get away from it. I photograph with this all the time for my night sky photography. If you're in Utah, Arizona, South Australia, my home diggity dog town, yes, you might need one, but it's still going to help cut through that glare outside when photographing night sky photography. Let me know in the comments below anything you want to know about light pollution filters. Do you own one? I'll leave a link in the description also for the Freewell Magnetic Filter System. But guys, that is me done for today, talking about this beautiful little filter to improve your night sky images. Ciao.